We've got a beautiful pin oak growing out in the garden and a few weeks ago I painted one of the leaves in watercolour. painting some pumpkin studies a few weeks ago for my beginner painters and I also painted an autumn leaf study at the same time. I really liked the way the autumn leaf study turned out so I decided to paint a larger version of it. We planted a beautiful pin oak about 10 years ago and it's such a pretty tree. I think it's my favourite tree in the whole garden. Last autumn I collected a few of the leaves that had fallen and I took some photos of them on a white sheet of paper in the sun. This was the photo that I chose because I love the cast shadow that it's making on the white paper. Once I had chosen my photo, I had to decide on the colours that I was going to use. I used to use paint colours straight out of the tube with very little mixing. Before I started a painting, I'd grab my colour chart and I'd compare it to my reference photo. And I think, hmm, that colour there looks like raw sienna. That colour there looks to me like winds of violet. That colour probably looks like permanent rose. And before I knew it, I'd have eight to ten colours out ready to start my painting. I don't do that anymore. Now I know better. Before I start a painting now, I try to decide how I can limit my palette. I think about how I can make do with just a few colours. With this leaf painting, I used four colours. Windsor & Newton's Burnt Sienna, Indian Yellow and Sepia and I also used some Daniel Smith's Cobalt Blue. I wanted a cool colour for the cast shadow that the leaf made which is why I chose Cobalt Blue. I didn't want to use Cobalt Blue straight out of the tube because I felt that it would have been too bright or too pretty. I knew I wanted to make it look more natural so I toned it down a little by mixing it with something. When I start the painting demonstration, you'll see me mix some burnt sienna with cobalt blue for the main colour of the leaf. Later on, you'll also see me mix cobalt blue with burnt sienna for the shadow. All I do is change the ratio of the two colours. The shadow has got more of the blue in it, while the leaf colour has got more burnt sienna in it. Doing that allowed me to make use of a limited palette, which really helps with colour harmony. You'll also see me glaze some Indian yellow over the leaf to give the leaf a golden glow. The paper I used for this painting was Arsh Cold Press. This is 640 GSM in weight or 300 pound. The full length tutorial of this painting I will post on my Patreon site this month along with another tutorial of the pumpkin studies. So head on over there if you want to improve your watercolour painting skills. I have a link in the description of the video. Okay, as I mentioned, to mix the main colour of the leaf, I used burnt sienna and I mixed some cobalt blue into it. I could have used a colour like burnt umber instead of mixing the colour like this, but I wanted to mix the cast shadow from cobalt blue and burnt sienna as well. And I also wanted to paint some warm areas on the leaf with burnt sienna. So as I mentioned before, by mixing these two colours together, that allowed me to limit my colour palette by taking away the need for an extra colour. I'll use that colour to paint over the entire leaf. To paint it onto the leaf, I worked on wet paper. Here I'm wetting the paper with some clean water. I wet the leaf in sections. I wet the top half first, I put the paint on, and then I wet the bottom half and put the paint on. I didn't wet it all at once because the paper probably would have started to dry before I got down to the bottom. Here I'm starting to apply the brown that I mixed onto the wet paper. I wet the paper because not only does it give me more time to apply the paint before it starts to dry, but it also allows me to leave a few areas of the white of the paper showing. When I wet the paper with water, I didn't need to take the water all the way to the outer edge of the leaf. I left a dry section roughly about the width of my brush around the outer edges. I did that because 
when I applied the paint, that dry edge would stop the pigment from accumulating around the outer edge like it sometimes does. It gives you an ugly dark edge. So hopefully this dry edge will stop that from happening. I've moved down to the bottom half of the leaf now. I wet the paper here as well. And here you can see as I apply the paint, I don't completely cover the paper with an even wash. I'll leave a few areas where the paper shows through and some of those areas will become the lightest parts of the leaf. And I took that mixture of burnt sienna and cobalt blue all the way over the top of the leaf and down onto the stem. And then I allowed it to dry before I continued on. Then when it was dry, I started to add some darker areas and detail on the leaf. To do that, I worked in sections. I used the veins of the leaf to section it off. I worked on wet paper again because I wanted soft edges on the paint marks that I made. I wanted the paint to creep and bleed over the paper. This time I did take the water all the way to the outer edges of the leaf. I did that for two reasons. I didn't want unwanted water lines appearing where I didn't want them. And I also wanted to run some paint along the edges to create some darker areas here and there. This is burnt sienna that I'm using. I applied the water with the number five brush and now I'm using my smaller zero brush to apply little areas of paint here and there. By sectioning off the leaf like this, I can also start to indicate the veins of the leaf by running some paint along the edges of the veins. In the darkest areas, I used sepia. I could have probably mixed more cobalt blue with burnt sienna to make a dark brown, but I found it easier to use sepia because I wanted it really dark and it was easier to wipe my wet brush over the sepia that had been squirted onto my palette. The paint puddle of sepia on my palette has hardened, so I used my wet brush to wipe over it to get that really dark, full-strength pigment. So what I do is wipe my wet brush over the pigment that's gone hard on my palette and then I apply it to the wet paper. That's quite dark. And that creeps over the wet paper. I don't want dark edges everywhere, just in a few spots. I even paint that over the top of the burnt sienna that's still wet. If I find it's not dark enough the first time, I layer it a second time. I wait till it dries, I re-wet, and then I put some more paint on. You can see how dark that colour is. It would have been more difficult for me to get cobalt blue and burnt sienna that dark. It was easier to use sepia. I also did the same thing with burnt sienna where I wanted it quite dark. I used the pigment at its full intensity. I wiped my brush into the pigment that squirted out rather than have a puddle of it that's mixed with water. Down the bottom here I'm still working on the wet paper. I'm leaving a little lighter edge on the left hand side and I'm also leaving a dry area in the middle of the leaf which will become the centre vein. So you can see how I'm working it down the side there but I'm not taking it all the way over to the other section and that creates the vein in the middle. And I also paint in the turned back part of the leaf there by painting around the lighter section. And I leave some of the light underwash showing, the wash that I painted on right at the start. Here I'm painting over the burnt sienna that's on there. And this is how it looked after I had painted in the second layer of paint. I stood back and looked at my painting and I compared it to the reference photo. 
And I thought to myself that there are a few areas that are slightly darker than other areas. These areas here look lighter to me. So I decided to use the colour that I started with and wash it over those darker areas. I decided to do it on the wet paper as well so that I could leave soft edges on the areas where I stopped the paint. And I worked on the left side first. I mixed a bit more colour for myself, so I got some burnt sienna again. I wanted it a little bit darker this time. And then I mixed the cobalt blue into it. And then I painted that onto the wet paper. I left some of the lighter wash showing. I didn't completely cover the paper with this colour. Then I wet the other side and I washed that colour on this side as well, just in those areas where I thought they were slightly darker on the reference photo. Down the bottom here too, I felt was a bit darker there. I wet the paper down lower, but on this section just here I didn't wet it, so instead I softened the paint edge with my wet brush. And I also put a bit of colour down in there too on the dry paper this time, and then I softened the edge again. After I did that, I dried it off and I decided to get a bit of Indian yellow. I wanted to warm it up a bit, so I glazed the Indian yellow over the top on dry paper. I wasn't going to put it everywhere, just in those areas that I thought needed it. I've got my number five brush. Paint's fairly watery. Before it dries, I soften away any hard paint edges. I didn't wet the paper here first before I put the paint on because the colour is fairly pale and it's transparent and I knew that I could quickly soften any hard edges on the dry paper. I mainly put this in the areas where I darkened it before. I didn't really touch the lighter areas of the leaf with this. but I did overlap it down onto this lighter section at the bottom here. And then I used my damp brush to soften away that edge at the bottom there. And I painted a bit over here as well. Everything underneath is dry, of course. Softening edges now. And I put a bit up here too. When it was dry, I drew in the cast shadows that were made by the turned over and curled sections of the leaf. I mixed some burnt sienna with some cobalt blue again. I used more pigment now and less water so that the colour would be quite dark. And I used that colour to paint the cast shadows on dry paper. Once they were painted all in, I turned my attention to the cast shadow that the leaf itself made. For this I wanted to use cobalt blue, but not cobalt blue on its own. I needed to mix some burnt sienna with it to tone it down a bit. Not a lot though, because I did want it to be blue. So here I'm using the cobalt blue with the burnt sienna, but I'm changing the ratio. So instead of using a lot of burnt sienna, I use more of the blue. I could have used cobalt blue on its own, but I was just a bit worried that it might have been a bit too bright and garish looking. I wanted more natural colours with this painting. <laughs> 
So there I've put too much burnt sienna in. I was a bit heavy handed with it. So now I've got to go back into my cobalt blue to make it more blue. I washed my brush out and I dabbed it on my cloth to get some of the moisture off it. And then I picked more cobalt blue up. I also needed to make sure I had enough of it to paint all of the cast shadow. Because I took the photo of the leaf in the sun, I had hard edges on the cast shadow, so I didn't bother wetting the paper in these smaller areas. Just painted the colour straight on. To make my leaf look a little less flat on the paper, I've left a tiny gap of white paper showing there against the leaf and the shadow. That gives the leaf an edge and it makes it look a little thicker. I used my smaller zero brush to take the paint closer to the leaf. I used my number five brush to paint in the main part of the shadow and then I switched to my zero brush to paint in the little spikes that came off the edge. I also dropped in a bit of burnt sienna into that cast shadow before it dried to add a few areas of warmth. And this is the last bit of cast shadow just here. And there it is, cut off my board. That was a fairly simple and quick painting using a limited palette. And hopefully there were some helpful tips and ideas in there for you. Please give this video a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Happy painting and I'll see you again next week. But, it's not but, just so. So I decided to paint a larger version of it. Did I say larger version of it? No. I don't think I said virgin then, did I? Once I had chosen my photo, I had to... I knew I wanted to make it look a little more narrow. I knew I wanted to make it look more natural and tone. I don't. Testing, testing, testing. When I start the painting demonstration, oh, yuck. <laughs>